just blow it out. Yeah, well, blow most of them, that's what you do. It's, it's, not, it's on? So you still right, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it in a minute. We'll talk about that later. I really want to know about that. We'll, we'll talk about it in a little while. No, okay? not now, not now. Right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So, guys, like we were saying, there are laws of color, okay? You got to know the foundation. You got to know the foundational things, by the way. guys tell me if this is cool because I can't take that light. Can you see me right here? Can you see it? It's too close. It's too close? Look, not the thin back on this one. Thank you. Yeah. You want to see this and, you, and maybe me on the side. Okay. Is that cool? Yes. Okay. Cool. Turn it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And then Mr. Right, Kevin, you, you could see that, right? It's a little closer. Mm -hmm. All right, now, if I step over here, you can see me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll be going back and forth. I just want to make sure you can see me. But I can't be there because that light is killing me. I'm going to be blind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll be able to see any color. All right, so <clears throat> like I was saying, guys, there are laws of color that we all got to understand. Foundational things. And some of the stuff you know, but I'm going to test out what you know, right? I mean, it was one thing to hear it and then think that you know it, but when let me give you a different perspective on what you may know, okay? So foundational things. There are laws of color. First law of color is that there are primaries. Those there are three primaries: blue, red, and yellow. It starts right there. Blue, red, and yellow. And I'm saying it that way for a reason. And you should follow and say it that way. Blue, red, and yellow. Right? First law of color. Right? Do you mix them in equal or unequal portions? Or if you mix them in equal or unequal portions, what are you going to get? You're going to get your secondary colors. So if you mix blue and red together, you will get violet. You will get a degree of violet. Like I said, depending on how, how you mix this, right, you will get a degree of violet. If you mix red and yellow together, you're going to get orange. If you mix yellow and blue together, you're going to get gr green. All right? That is the second law of color. A mixture of your of your primaries give you your secondary colors. And your secondary colors are violet, orange, and green. Your secondary colors are violet, orange, and green. I'm being redundant for a reason. I'm gonna tie it into with you in just for you in just a minute. Okay? So, the next law of color is that if you mix your primaries and your secondaries together, it gives you your tertiary colors, right? So, if I mix blue and violet together, I'm going to get blue-violet, right? If I mix uh, violet and red together, I'm going to get red-violet, right? If I mix red and orange together, I'm going to get red-orange. Right? If I mix um, yellow and orange together, I'm going to get yellow-orange. Right? If I mix yellow and green together, I'm going to get yellow-green. If I mix blue and green together, I'm going to get blue-green. Simple law of color. By the way, when you talk about these sec primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, we we discuss those. One of the definitions in color, those glossary terms that you need to really understand when it comes to color, is that we talk about color on a color wheel or a color star, right? And later on, we're going to draw that. You know, so that you know when you're out and about, you know, you're doing hair, and you just don't have one of these around you. You know, you'll be able to draw it out in your mind or draw it out on a piece of paper or what have you not. But this is where most hairdressers miss it. It's where they miss it. They go and they start doing applying color, and you can tell that they never refer to this. This is your Bible when it comes to hair color. All colorists that are true colorists, they refer to this religiously. If you understand this color wheel, you can do any color out there. You can do any color out there. You know, I oftentimes see people, you know, they'll, they'll do a formulation and they'll, you know, put it up in the foils and what have you not or, 
you know, they'll go back and they keep checking it, and they're doing what you call hope color. I hope this turns out right, right? Or, you know, Jesus color. Oh, Lord Jesus, please help me make sure this color turns out correctly. Why? The reason why is because you don't understand this, right? When you go out here in the real world and you go out to see professionals, you'll see them do two or three colors at the same time. And the reason why is because it's, they, they did the work to do the formulation first by understanding this color well. So if you do this right and you get this right, you can then have that one color processing because you know already know how it's going to turn out, right? And you go and you do another one, right? And the way that they charge for color these days, that can be a great amount of income that you can make as a professional because you're able to do more than one service at a time, right? So color is an applied science. What do I mean by when I say an applied science? It's a learned science. You know, you can teach this, right? And then anybody can learn how to do it. It's not a problem. But most people miss it because they don't understand this color wheel. So let's take it a little farther. So we really want you to understand the color wheel, okay? So in addition to the fact that you have uh, primaries, secondaries, and tertiary colors when it comes to the color wheel, once you start to lift these colors, you're going to discover that they have what they call pigment. So what do I mean by that? So we are, we are artists when it comes to hair color, right? We're coloring on a canvas. The hair is our canvas, right? Think about that canvas. Let's think about these walls that we are seeing right now. The walls are white, right? So are we coloring, coloring when we color our client's hair? Is, is their hair just white? No, no it's not. It has, it has a natural color to it, right? And that natural color is gonna have those three primaries in it, right? The thing is that those three primaries, once you start to lift them out of the hair, you're gonna see what we call a underlining pigment. What's, what's left in the hair after you start to remove. Now, when you start to remove color from the hair, there is an order by which those pigments are removed from the hair, okay? There is an order, right? So you remember when I first started, I said the, 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 prim, the first the law of color was the primary colors, and I kept saying blue, red, and yellow, blue, red, and yellow. Remember I kept saying that? Well, when you talk about lifting the hair, that's the order in which those pigments start to release out of the hair. The first pigment to leave the hair is the blue pigment. It's the largest molecule in the hair, and it is also the first one to leave, right? Another fact that is missed when we talk about hair color, right? When you, when you put color in the hair, color on top of color makes more color. It creates more color. It creates more color. Meaning more problems. Meaning more pigment. Okay, more pigment is going in. Color on top of color creates more color. And also the reverse is also a fact. If you have all that color on the hair, then it's hard to get that color up because you're dealing with even more pigment, right? There's another fact that escapes us when, we do, when we're do when we doing color. You can see that people's, pe people are missing that fact, is that color on top of color creates more color, right? Another fact is, like I just said, that when you are coloring, there's a natural pigment contribution that is left in the hair as you start to lift, okay? And it starts this way. The blue pigment that's in the hair is generally denoted as darkest brown. So darkest brown color has a lot of blue pigment in it, okay? We denote it as black. We say black, but all hair color is a, a, a shade of brown. All hair color is a shade of brown, right? When we talk about the pigment that's in it, if it's very dark, then that means you got a lot of blue pigment. And it can appear to be, in our eye, to be black, right? But it's actually a degree of darkest brown, depending on how much pigment is in that hair. So as we start to lift, the first thing that goes is blue, okay? And we go up. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is this, whenever you lift, you have to understand that after you do the lifting, there is something that's left in the hair. There is an, a degree of pigment that's left in the hair. 
That's the canvas that you paint on. That's the canvas. See, you know, it's like if you go to an art store or you go to, or so like yesterday, I was uh, in Walmart, you know, I was looking for some paper. And, you know, I could have picked up the paper that was just all white sheets or I could have got the paper that was had multiple colors in the, in, the, in the notebook, right? But I realized that I wanted to be able to have a paper that if I used a red marker, I could see the red. If I used a yellow marker, I could truly see the yellow. So what canvas is that that I bought? A white canvas, right? But are we painting, when we do our client's hair, on a white canvas? No. So you just can't pick up a bottle and say, oh, you know what? I want to do red on my client's hair, and her hair is, her hair is darkest brown. And I put that red that the bottle said is red, put it on her hair and expect to see that it's going to turn out just like the, bottle, the picture on the bottle. doesn't work that way. It will work if her hair was just, you know, completely white, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work that way. Right? And that's what separates you as a professional. Is that if you go into CVS and Walgreens and whatever you're not, you know, you're going to see all these colors that they're, that they're promoting to your client. She can just put on her hair herself. I have a, I have a client coming in on, on Friday. You know, she's a brand new client. Guess what she said to me? She says, well, I need you to touch up my roots and give me highlights. You know, I've already, I already, you know, two months ago, did my own color. Right? And then she wanted me to, she wanted me to give her a price. Think about that. I don't know what she's done. Because I know she don't understand color. She might understand the directions in the box. Right? But what separates the professional from the novice is to having this knowledge. So when she comes in, we're going to have to discuss that. And that's how you make your money in the industry. Set yourself apart by knowing what you know, what you know. And this is knowing what you know, what you know. Because I guarantee you, even there, there are some professions out there that don't quite get this. And they don't, they don't see the importance of understanding this to the degree that they need to understand it. Right? So, what, let's talk about this natural pigment contribution some more, right? <clears throat> Remember, as you lift the hair, the hair goes through stages. And there, there's a numerical system that we use to determine those stages of what we call uh, levels, right? And those levels are determined by the darkness or the lightness in the hair. And so when we look at these levels, we start at level one, and it's denoted as the darkest level that you can be. And it has a lot of blue pigment that's contributing to making it so dark. And as you go up, those levels get lighter and lighter and lighter to level 10. Level 10 is the lightest level that you can achieve. These other colors, you see I made, I made the numbers a little different color. And the reason why I made them different color is because as you go up, a lot of companies make a level 11 and they make a level 12 color. And they're what we call transparent colors. What do I mean by transparent colors? Well, think of it this way. Let's say that I took a balloon, and it was a blue balloon. And I started blowing that balloon up. I continued to blow it up, right? As I blow it up to the point where it's almost about to burst, you start to see it looks lighter, and I can kind of see through it, right? It's still blue. But because I've created lift in it by the air denotes the lift, right? It starts to be transparent, right? And that's how color works, guys. Color is just a reflection of light, right, flowing through it. So the lightest is 10. So when you start using, getting here, these are what we call transparent colors. And those transparent colors, are, are they, they appear to be lighter, but really they're a level 10, but they're yellow, but they are the pale and palish yellow that you can get to. They're still at, the, at a yellow stage, right? And you're, what you're simply doing when you take them up this level, if you, if you devoid the hair of all the pigment, there's nothing left. This is why you see, you know, when people use lighteners, you see the hair start to break off. And I have a, I have a client right now, she just insists on devoiding all of her hair of the yellow. And then she calls back and says, you know, my hair's breaking off. I'm like, duh, really? <laughs> right? This is just a fact and a law of color, right? So you have to consider that you've got to keep some, some, some color in your hair. And also, those pigment that's in, the pigment that's in the hair, it contains, it has a weight to it. You know, it's, it has a weight to it because it's organic. It's actually a living thing inside the hair, right? It's organic, so it has a weight to it. So when you devoid it, the hair loses its weight, right? And that's what causes it sometimes to, 
you know, rupture, along with the cuticle layer and all that other stuff, you know, that we'll talk about at a later time. But understand that another law of color is that when you are lifting, there is a natural pigment contribution, or what I call a remaining pigment that's left in the hair as you continue to lighten from dark to light, okay? So, how does that look on the color wheel? Well, let's look at this color wheel. <clears throat> so, we said blue was, was denoted by level one. And if you notice on this color wheel, as we go up, every color is denoted by a, num a numerical, it has a numerical number assigned to it, right? So, blue being a level one, blue violet level two, violet level three, vi red violet is level four, red is level five, red orange is six, uh, orange is seven, orange yellow is eight, yellow orange is nine, and yellow is ten. Do you see why I did that? You see what I did right here? Right? So what I mean by that, just in case you don't, is this. As you lift, as you see, the hair gets lighter as you go up. Right? So when you get in these stages, the in-between stage between red and red orange, you're going to see a degree of red start to leave the hair, and then it becomes a degree of orange. As you go from orange to yellow, you're going to see a degree of orange in the hair get lighter and lighter, and then it starts to turn into yellow or dark yellow. Then it gets to a lighter yellow, and then finally to a complete yellow, right? Another fact that is lost sometimes when we do color. What do I mean by that? You ever done a color on somebody's hair and you said, you know, I'm going to do this color on my client, and, oh, I see that it's yellow. You know, I need to neutralize this yellow. And I go and I put, you know, a, a, I know that purple neutralizes yellow, so I put the purple on that yellow, and it really is purple. That's not what I wanted, <laughs> right? It's because people forget the degree of lightness that the hair goes through, right? And there are in-between stages. And so as a colorist, we have to learn how to perfect that. And that's the reason why different hair color companies have different colors. You know, you ever open up one of those color swatch books and you see all of these variations of colors? You know, in the red, in the red shades, the red tones, you see all these degrees or levels of red, right? In the brown shades, you see all these degrees of brown. That's great for you because you can just really technically just pick the, the, the match the the uh, swatch to what you're trying to do, pick, you know, the tube of color to mix it. But a real colorist is going to know how to create that themselves. They're going to know how to fine tune and tweak their color formulations so that they can create what we call custom blended colors. So your clients can't duplicate that, right? I remember one. I remember you know I have a client that comes in and um, you know she wanted she bought me the picture of Vanessa Williams. She wanted to be this Vanessa Williams shade of blonde. And, you know, Vanessa Williams has a shade of brown that is not orange, right? It is really a nice, natural, golden brown looking, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people that want that. And they try to achieve that level of blonde, but she couldn't get people, she couldn't get anybody to do that. But what I was able to do was achieve it as close as possible. She says, this is the best I've ever seen it. So she went somewhere else. She went out of state. She went somewhere else, and they were trying to duplicate it. They didn't duplicate. She calls me, I said, oh, that's a custom blended color. I don't give my custom blends out. That's a Kevin Anthony blend, right? <laughs> that's what sets me apart. That's why I can charge what I charge. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why it's important to understand the fundamentals. Because if you do, it's going to set you apart. And some of you got personalities that's going to help you as a professional to be that type of stylist. Okay? But you have to have the substance to back it. And this is what a professional, such as myself, sees in stylist. You know, we have the ability if we understand the fundamentals. Just like when you go to a hair show and you see these great and wonderful, you know, colorists or stylists on the stage and you wish you would do that. Well, you can. All they did is perfect the fundamentals. This. Okay? So let's take this a little step further, guys. The other law of color is that there, on, this, on this color wheel... The color on the opposite side of that color is what we call a complementary color. The complementary color gives you a um, rounding out effect. And I know you can't see that, but that's brown. Gives you a rounding out effect. 
And that's what we're trying to do when we neutralize our tone, our colors. That's what we're trying to do. We are trying to neutralize the warmth or the coolness in our color. And by the way, warmth and coolness is something you have to factor in as you lighten the hair color. Okay, because what's remaining in the hair, the pigment that's remaining, is either going to be cool or it's going to be warm. Look at it, okay? As you go up this color wheel, you notice that you go from cool to warm, right? So, as you can see, one side of the color wheel is warm and the other side, cool. So you have warm colors and then you have cool colors, right? You have to factor that in. Yes, you can ask, ask the question. Couldn't some of those warm colors um, in, in your retrospect on hair be considered a cooler, like, blonde, like a cooler blonde, like a um, honey golden color? Couldn't that be so you, you asked the question, can some of those warm colors be considered cool? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. That is a great question that you've asked. Because if you look at this color wheel right here, where colors are separated is their ability to understand what you just asked me, okay? See, when you're doing, like, let's say, highlights, and you ask your client, you know, um, what color highlights they want, and you, can, you determine what color highlights they want, you can create highlights and lowlights just to make that color even pop out even more, okay? I see a lot of times when people do blondes, they will do a low light underneath the blonde to really make that blonde look pronounced. What do I mean by that when I say that? See, this white wall would look even whiter if I put a black color beside it. Mm -hmm. The black is going to look even blacker because I have a white wall beside it. You got me? Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like yellow and violet or purple, okay? Because it's the counteracting color, right? If you have something that's violet or purple, all right, what's going to happen is it's going to really show that violet if you have it against a backdrop of yellow. And the opposite applies. It's the complementary color. But the other thing is, and the more advanced thing is, that guess what? You also have complements beside each other on this color wheel. So that's like you asked me. See, if I have somebody that's red and I've colored them red, mm -hmm. you know, I can do a highlight on her in a red-orange color. It will make that red really pop out. But then I can also create some low lights by making it cooler mm -hmm. by using a red-violet shade. So the colors that are on this, on, that touch the color that you are at also can help you create a highlighting effect or a low lighting effect. So that was a great question that you asked, and that's where your skill is going to come in. But it all starts with understanding this color well. All starts with understanding the color well. So let's go, let's have a practice here. So, you know, we're in the salon, and we're doing our client's hair, and we've lifted them, and it's orange. But she doesn't want orange in her hair, right? She wants to be a dark blonde, right? So we have to understand the color wheel and understand how to get to that dark blonde. So we know that the law of color is the color on the opposite side of the color wheel is the complementary color. What does that mean for you as a stylist? That means if she is a color that you don't want to see, like orange, that means that guess what you have to do? You have to neutralize it. And when you neutralize it, it creates a shade of brown. Shade of brown, right? So if she wants to be a shade of brown that's a honey dark blonde, but you have orange that's left in the hair after you've done your lifting phase, then guess what you have to put on the hair? The complementary color. The complementary color is going to be what? Blue. You mean tone, right? You don't the mean, tone. You don't the mean color. Tone is the same as color. Well, when I say color, I mean you don't want to go putting on a um because I. It, I'm not there yet. I know what you're about to ask me. I'm gonna go there, right? Great point, great point. But you wanted me, and I, let me back it up. Let me back it up. I want you to understand complementary colors first. Complementary colors. So the first thing that we have to understand is, if, is that it's never a mistake until you let it walk out the door. You can always fix what you don't want by understanding the color wheel. So if I have too much yellow in the hair, guess what I need to use? I need to use something that's purple or violet, right? If I have too much red in the hair, guess what I need to use? Green. 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 Right? Understanding the complementary color is going to give me my neutralizing effect. It's going to neutralize the unwanted tones that I'm seeing in the hair. 
All right? So now, where she was going, how do I determine the color that I'm going to put on? Do I just go grab a bottle of purple and put it on my clients here? Do I go grab a bottle of blue and put it on? No, no, no. It's a tone. It's a shade, right? And those shades and tones are all determined by you, the colorist, understanding what your client needs. So you got to look, be able to look at that client and say, oh, you know, she's got those warm tones in her skin, but she also has gold in her skin. So I know those gold tones are a little, more, little gray on her. She's warm, right? And I'm going to look at her eyes, and I'm going to see that she has those brown eyes, and you can see the, the, the red and the gold and the orange of her, of her eye color, right? So I know she's, she's warm. So those warmer, higher lift colors are going to look fabulous on her, right? It's going to bring out those eyes, right? So that's a skill set that you as a stylist have to develop to understand how to use your complementary colors to your advantage. So let's go back. Cool and warm, right? We know that warm is on this side, cool is on this side, right? We know that we have to, we're warm, how we're going to complement it is we're going to use color on the opposite side of the colorway. That's the first thing we're going to do. Yes, we can go in and create highlights and lowlights, but we're not there. We're sim simply talking about creating a complementary color to neutralize the unwanted tones we see in the air. So how do we do that? Okay, let's go back. So here's our color wheel, right? And let's say that our client is orange, but we know we have to put a blue color on her to neutralize it to create that browning effect, right? So do I put a blue on her at a level one? No, because I still need the level of lightness in her hair at a level seven. And even though it's orange, I still need to be at that, at that lightness, right? So what I need to find is a blue base of color that is at a level seven. Oh, fine. Somebody learned something in my class today. I'm glad to see that. Great. So we're looking for a base of tone. That's going to be blue, but at a level seven. You got me? This is where colorists miss it. And I see it all the time because I also see this. I also see you use a catalyst such as bleach, and you bleach them up to a level, and you don't even know what that level is. You just willy nilly bleaching them. You put the bleach on and you put them under the dryer. So you don't know where it's at after you finish, and you're putting color on it. It's impossible. It tells me you don't understand this color wheel. You don't understand the level of lift and the stages you're going through. Yes, the bleach will bleach you up or get your lift, but it's other factors to consider once you've got the lift. And the other factor to consider is what? The remaining pigment that's left in the hair after you've lifted them to that level. You can determine that with color. Okay? And how you can determine that with color, we're going to come back to this. How you're going to determine that with color is that understanding the level system's relationship to your catalyst. The catalyst can be a developer, could be a bleach. Catalyst is just another name for developer or lightener. Okay? And your catalyst can be your developers. So let's talk about developers really quick so we can, we can really answer the question about how to tone our client's hair. All right? So when we talk about developers or our catalysts, you have developers that range from 10 to 40 volumes of lift. And simply means is that the volume of lift that you're going to get is 10 volumes. It's going to take, take you one level of lift in the hair. So what do we mean by one level of lift? Let's go back. If we go back here, we said that the natural pigment contribution is determined by the level of darkness and the level of lightness in the hair, right? So one level of lift if I have a natural level one, to lift at one level, I'm going to see, what am I going to see in the hair? Blue violet left in the hair. So I have to consider this blue violet when I am determining my color formulation. Or if she's a natural level three and I lift her to a level seven, how many levels of lift have I lift her? One, two, three, four levels of lift. So once I lift her four levels, I know that I'm left with orange pigment that's in the hair. What creates orange pigment? What to? Green and yellow. Yeah. Huh? Green and yellow. Green and yellow. What? So that means you're going to have to use some ash. To I'm asking you a question. Green and yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Green and yellow. Okay. So those pigments may arise too. So let me go back. 
What makes orange? Red and orange? Red and yellow. 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 Two primaries, red and yellow, make orange. Got me? So, let me ask you a question. Let's go to this one. We go back. Here we go. Red and yellow make orange, right? So, let me go to this one. Red and yellow make orange, right? So, and it's on tape, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. That was charity. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I learned something. I don't care. Right. Make a mistake. So, let's learn. Because, I mean, there, there are people in our viewing audience that will make the same mistake. I've done it. Okay? I've done it. But let's go back and grab it and understand it. So, we, if we know that orange is left in our client's hair, right? What two primaries make orange? Red and yellow make orange, right? A law of color is that whenever you want to neutralize, think about what primary is missing. Think about what's missing in the hair. Blue. Blue. Because guess what? Blue's on the other side of the color wheel. Mm -hmm. Got it? Got it. So it's an applied science here, guys. All you got to do is add it. One plus one is going to equal two. So if I said to you, you know, one plus what equals two? Right. It's the same <laughs> as me saying I have orange left in the hair, right? And I need to know what I need to use on that hair in order to neutralize it. It's the same thing. It's an equation. So you're going to use the level of whatever. To exactly. Use. That's why we were here. That's exactly why we're here, okay? Exactly why we're here. So we know that orange is at a level seven, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna find a blue base that will tone that orange. But I don't need to use a blue at a, a dark level one because it's gonna make it blue, blue, blue. right? So because it's a dominant pigment, right? I need to find a blue that has just enough blue in it at a level seven that's gonna give me that orange. And so what do I mean by that? I hope I brought it here. I think I did. I want to show you the saturation chart. I think I brought it. Um, just say, get your hand off my mic. Here we go. I'm sorry. This is a color saturation chart, all right? And I want you to be able to see that. I hope you can see that online. And what this color saturation chart, can you see it? Back, move closer, okay. Closer, can you see it now? Okay. So what this color saturation chart is showing you, the degree of pigment that's in the in the color tube as you go up, right? So as you can see, at a level one, there is half color pigment and half um, what we call um, derivatives, right? The other parts of the color that make up the color, the tube of color. So as you can see at a level one, you have a lot of pigment. It's blue, obviously, we know that at a level one. But look what happens as you go up. If this was all just blue pigment, a blue pigment at a level 10 has very little blue in it and a lot of other, right? A blue pigment at a level 1 has a lot more. You get me? So this is why when we talk about our color wheel, when we say we're going to neutralize with blue, we're going to use the blue at a level 7. Look how much blue is in a level 7. It's not that much. It's just enough where you keep your level of lightness in the hair, but it neutralizes the orange. This is the factor that we have to factor in when we're doing color, okay? Oh, I see, I've touched a few people today, right? That's a great thing. That's a great thing when it comes to color. It was one of those factors that I had to grasp when, when I was doing color, and it took the fear of color away from me. Because once I got that, I don't care what it looked like, what it came up, because I still wasn't getting it right on the front end. But I knew it didn't have to leave out that way. So I make the mistake, look at my mistake, oh, it's orange. It's too orange, Kevin. So I shouldn't have used that color, right? But it's orange, and I know how to counteract orange. I know I need to find a blue at that level of orange. And I put that on it, it's going to give me the color I want. So when she walks out, it's going to be what she wanted, right? So what we have to do as hairdressers is start understanding in our mind's eye what levels that we're at. 
as far as color. Color is its concern. All right? So think about it. Let's just go around the room. No. <laughs> so let's talk about what, are, what those colors are. So when we talk about colors on a hair, the first one we're going to talk about is the young lady sitting up here in the front. So tell me, what color do you see at the level of lightness in your hair right now? Or you guys tell me. What color is that? At, at, what level is she at? What do you see as far as color in her hair? What is your mind's eye seeing as far as color in her hair right now? Her levels seven or eight. I see an eight. So are you seeing more yellow than orange, or are you seeing more orange than yellow in her hair? Yeah, I see more orange than yellow. Okay, so you see more orange than yellow. All right, so so if I'm looking at this and I see orange, and I look at the young lady in the back here, um, and I see her hair, is her hair, what color is her hair? Orange, right? So is this orange as well? It's a different shade. So it's a little lighter, right? So that tells me in my mind's eye that yes, she's orange, but she might be a orange yellow here, right? She might be orange yellow, so she might be a level eight, right? Absolutely, good. So, you know, one of the things I had to learn to do is, like, I'm walking around, going to the grocery store, I'm out in public, whatever. I start looking at people's hair color, and I'm saying, oh, that's a level seven, uh, oh, that's yes. a level six, uh, oh, that's yes. a level five. Oh, and that, that <laughs> practice develops in you, your mind's eyes, to levels. And that's a key factor in developing your skill set. You know, it's just like this. You know, a basketball player, you know, they say Shaq, he could not shoot free throws. Right? He couldn't make a free throw, so they, so they named something after him. They call it hack shack They were hacking because they knew that he wouldn't be able to go to the free throw line, hit those free throws. You know what, ha what Shaq should have done, or what he could have done, is practice his free throws. Right? This is the same thing as us as hairdressers. We don't practice our skill so that we can identify it in our eye, which will help us to determine levels and tones. Levels and tones is very key when it comes to formulating hair color and getting the correct results that you're looking for, right? Levels and tones. So, the practice. Go around and you see people, hey, that's a level five. Most professional hair colors, they talk in terms of levels and tones. They say, well, you know, she's a level six, she's a dark blonde. Oh, that's like or they say level, level huh? Exactly, and I know exactly what they're talking the about. Are you talking about. Right. Well, they're talking about that she's a pale yellow. That's a pale yellow at a level at an eleven. Oh yes. Right. Point. Yeah. Exactly. So I understand. It's a language that colorists talk. Pale yellow? Would it be a red pale? It's a pale an eleven. It's a pale yellow. A six point eleven though. Well, the six is something totally different. Yeah, that's what I'm about that, to That's say. something totally different. Okay. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Right. So when you talk about color. And you talk about what color is. And there is a language that is spoken when it comes to color. The first thing to do, remember this class is all about the fundamentals. Right? Learning the fundamentals. Is to start identifying in your mind's eye what levels are. Okay? What is a dark blonde? What level is that? What level is a light brown? Seven and eight. No, six I mean and eight. five. Oh. <laughs> A, level, a, a dark blonde is a level six, right? What is in dark blonde? Red and orange. You see a little bit of red, and you start to see it going into an orange. Absolutely. It has a more pigmented blue in it. No, not a, not a level six. A level six, you're going to see a, a more red pigment. So the blue has to be colorized by the Well, according to the color, well, it has. Look what happens. Oh, yeah. Look what happens. And by size. Exactly. So the other factor is, and that's a good point why you brought that up, is really you don't have to worry about neutralizing anything when it comes to one when you're at levels one, two, and three. There's really no neutralization yeah. here, right? Neutralization starts when you get into the reds, right? At about a level four, between the four and the ten, where you have to where really you start worrying about using your complementary colors to neutralize, okay? And so you know, red is the hardest thing to get out of the hair because red is still present in the hair all the way up to like a level eight or nine. It's just in the form of orange. The orange still has red, red pigment. It is the lightest red, right? The orange color is still the lightest red. And a lot of women always say, I don't want to see any red. I don't want to see any red. 
and then you know you've got him up to a level eight. And she looks in the mirror and she said, oh, it's still red. Well, yeah, because orange is the lightest red. You know, you go, we can take, only take so much of it out. Sometimes our clients, we have to educate them on what's possible, right? <laughs> and what's not. Look, bro. <laughs> right? You know, I have a good one for that, you know, client of mine. You know, she just wants to take all the color out of here. I'm like, darling, you know, let's roll it back in a little bit because you ain't going to have no hair on your head, right? But, but it's an educational process, but it starts with you. You got to have it down. And the reason why. Remember, I said you got to know what, what you know, know what, what you know. Because <laughs> if you know what you know what you know, your money will grow. Hello. <laughs> 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 it will grow, you know, right? You know, and the, and the really other thing, guys, I want to, I want to say to you is this, you know, just just a little sidebar, you know, I don't want to get off topic, but just a little sidebar with you guys. Once you know what you know what you know, you develop a certain swagger. You develop a certain confidence right. in who you are as a stylist, right? And that confidence is going to attract people to you, and it's going to detract people from you. Mm-hmm. See, I know that my confidence detracts a lot of people from me. I don't need you anyway, because guess what? You can't afford to pay me. <laughs> broke. Right? Because I'm not I don't do this to be broke. You know, it takes a lot for me to stand on my, my legs all day long. It takes a lot for me to think about what I gotta do yeah. and to deal with your attitude because you are already okay. feeling like, you know, can they do this or not? Right? I got that's it's like being on stage and performing. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I should get paid for that. So I'm saying to you, what builds that confidence in being able to perform is the knowledge. Having that knowledge down and knowing what you know what you know. Oh, when a client comes in, you know, she got a a color issue, and this might be a color correction, and a lot of people shy away away from it. Oh, she got green hair. I ain't doing that. You do it. Oh, yes, sir. I will do it. Come on, darling. Come on, have a seat right here. I can do your color and take that green up out your hair, right? Or take that brassiness out of your hair. Now. We got to talk about this in the consultation because this is called a color correction. Mm-hmm. And the color correction is a whole different price list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a whole other price list. Right? And you, you just got to let, let the person make the decision. You know, it costs a lot of money to jack your hair up. And guess what? It's going to cost a lot of money to, to fix it. it. <laughs> so it's kind of like a mechanic. You're charging exactly. for your, your knowledge of Come knowing how it. to fix this car. But in reality, you knew all you had to do was Exactly. You knew you had to put that oil in that car before, yeah. you know, it broke down. Mm-hmm. But now you're blaming the mechanic because he got to charge you to fix it? No, it wasn't his fault. Yeah, not he just to fix it. Now you got to buy all Exactly. Yeah. You knew that eating all that junk food and all that sugar was going to make you have high cholesterol that <laughs> makes you have a heart attack. Now you're going to the cardiologist, and the cardiologist tells you, well, I can save your life, but it's going to cost you this amount of money. You got a choice. Die or pay. <laughs> to go to school here and then go out there and think about, oh, you know what, I got to go learn how to do this color. No, I want you to, when you're here, I want I want the salons to come and recruit you from the school to then go work with them in their salons. That's what I want to see happen. And that can happen. It's just whether you decide it's going to happen. Right? See, I'm one of those stylists where once you be around me and you realize what I know, only one or two things are going to happen. You're going to jump on board and acquire the knowledge or you're going to get offended by the knowledge. Mm-hmm. You ain't mad at me. You're, you're mad at what I know. And you're mad that I have the audacity to tell you what I know. But that's what we do as professionals. That's what the profession is for. It's a mindset, guys. That's what I want you to understand. It's a mindset. Know what you know what you know. So let's bring it back to color. That's why I'm saying to you, it's important for you to understand these fine things about color. And it's not difficult. It's like understanding how to add and subtract. Literally, literally, that's what it is. It's a matter of understanding how to add and subtract. It's just the language of color that you're learning how to add and subtract. That's what this is. So, y'all ready for some formulation? Yes. Good, good. So, let's, let's, let's briefly talk about this, and then we'll talk about formulation. So when we're talking about the level system's relationship to your catalyst, and remember, your catalyst can be your developer or your bleach lighteners or whatever. 
It is what causes, what is going to start the process of lift and deposit in your client's hair. The catalyst, right? So when we talk about a developer as our catalyst, they come in 10, 20, 30, and 40 volumes. Now I know some companies have 60 volumes. I've seen a company have a 90 volume. Really? I'm like, really? A 90 volume? <laughs> right. Right. Well, actually, you know, developers are made of what we call hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. And, you know, you can buy hydrogen peroxide all the way up to 135 volume. It is a commercial grade of, of peroxide. But it's not recommended that you put that on the skin or the hair. But, you know, FDA has, you know, said that, you know, 10, 20, 30, and 40 volumes can be safe on hair color, with hair color, okay? So, 10 volumes of lift is going to give you one level of lift of, of of the pigments that are in the hair. One level of lift. And we talked about that a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago, about um, about pigment that's in the hair. And in phase two of this same class, we're going to get even more detailed when it comes to the pigment that's in the hair and understanding pigmentation that's in the hair, okay? But you get one level of lift, and in 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to get that level of lift, okay? 20 volume gives you up to two levels of lift in the hair. And it takes about 30 minutes to get there, okay? 30 volume developer is gonna give you up to three levels of lift in the hair, all right? 40 volume is gonna give you up to four levels of lift in the hair, all right? So, when you talk about levels of lift, remember your developer is going to give you either one level up to four levels of lift, developer. It's going to give you that. Now, if you want to go beyond four levels of lift, what do you have to use? Bleach. You have to use bleach. Bleach doesn't have a, um, a, a stopping point. It can just continue to lift from black to blonde, okay, depending on how you use it and how long you leave it on, all right? But in this scenario, we're talking about developer as our catalyst gives you up to four, four levels of lift. So let's talk about what that means for us when we talk about formulation. Let's talk about what it means for us. So, when we talk about formulation, there are some steps that you go through to formulate your client's color. The first thing that we have to understand and recognize when it comes to formulation is that the first step is the consultation. Again, this is one of those steps where a lot of stylists miss it. Client comes in, says, I want color on my hair. Oh, girl, what color you want? She pulls out a picture, and you say, okay, I can do that, because you look at the picture, and you go back, you say, oh, that's red. I go, you go back, and you grab red color off the <coughs> shelf. And we really believe that's the, that's the methodology that people go through, right? I've seen a few people in here do the same thing. I've seen it out in salons I've worked in. I've done it, okay? <laughs> but then that's why your mistakes happen, because there's a lot of other factors we didn't consider. So let's talk about the factors. Let's give you the tried, tested, and true method that will get you to a great color result. And this is what you want to do every time that you do color on your client's hair. If you follow this along with that color wheel, you're going to get great final results, okay? So, first step is to determine in your consultation what? You want to look at the client's hair condition. You got to look at um, what level of hair her natural level is. What she's had on her hair previously, right? You gotta look at, does she have a relaxer? Does she have some other altered chemical, right? You gotta look at the porosity of her hair, the texture and the type of hair that she has. You have to look at all those, all those are, are major factors in determining in your consultation what you can achieve based on what your client wants. And in the other phases of this class, we're gonna take each one of those, we're talking about porosity, we're talking about tone, we're talking about, you know, um, other chemicals. We're talking about texture and type. We're going to take each one of those and break those down to really help you to understand how to how to understand and factor those in when you're doing your client's hair color to get even better results. Okay? Because the better result that you can achieve, the more money you're going to make. Or the more money you can charge. Right? So, second step is once we've determined in our consultation, it lead us to our second step which is going to be to determine the client's natural um, hair color level. What's her natural level? Remember just a few minutes ago we were going around and we were looking at your, your natural level to determine what that natural level is in our mind's eye. 
What is a natural level four, right? What's a natural level five? What, what does that mean, right? So once we determine a natural level, she can tell us what she desires to be. Hey, you know, I want to be a Vanessa Williams Brown, or she might say blonde, right? So if I'm looking at her and her natural level is a level three, I'm looking at the picture that she shows me that she wants to, that where she wants to be at, her desired level, and that's going to give me a determining factor as to how many levels of lift that I must achieve in order to get her to the, the desired level, okay? So in that regard, in that regard, we have to understand that once we understand the client's natural color level, then that's going to get us to level three which is going to determine the client's desired level. That's going to help us to understand how many levels of lift you have to achieve to get to the desired level. Right? See, this can be achieved, can this be achieved with developer, or do you need to pre-lighten with bleach? See, if she wanted to be a um, pale yellow, like a level 10, pale yellow, or level 11, pale yellow, and she's a natural level 3, I can't do that with just developer. Right? Because that's more than four levels of lift. Right? So that's going to tell me I can't do it. So I'm going to have to use bleach to pre-lighten her. Right? But if she's, on, if she's going four levels or less than four levels, then I can achieve that by just my color formulation. So in our scenario, we're going to determine her natural level. That then, uh, then we're going to determine the client's desired level, and which is going to help us to determine what level of developer that we must use to achieve that level of lightness. Right? Okay, so once we've done that, we then have to know that if I use that level of developer, it's going to give me a level of lightness in the hair. It's going to leave a, a tone in the hair, what we call a remaining pigment in the hair. So that remaining pigment that's left in the hair is what, what I must factor in. That's the canvas that I'm coloring. That's what I'm coloring. I'm not coloring what I see with my eye or natural level. I'm coloring where I'm lifting to. You're coloring where you're lifting to. I'm hoping that makes sense to you. Okay? You're coloring where you're lifting to. So if she's lifting to a level six or seven, I need to know what her remaining pigment will be at a level six or seven. I factor that in when I'm determining step four, which is going to determine my tone, right? Determine the tone by understanding the remaining pigment left in the hair after lifting to the desired level. Using the color wheel to find the complementary color, and if the client wants or needs to have warm or cool tones. Remember when we were showing you the color wheel, cool on one side, warm on the other? This is where you would factor that in. Once you are knowing, I'm, hey, I gotta, I'm, I'm coloring to a level seven. I'm using a, a um, developer, a, a 40 volume developer, and I'm lifting her to a level seven. Okay? So if I'm lifting her to a level seven, I know at level seven, there's what left in the hair? Orange at a level seven. So if I know level seven is left in the hair, do I want it to be a cool orange or do I want it to be a warm orange, orange. in the hair, right? Do I want to see cool tones or warm tones? So either way, I know I have to use a blue toner in it at a level seven, right? So it could be blue or blue violet, right? What's going to be, what's going to be cooler, blue or blue violet? Blue is going to be cooler. Blue violet is going to have a little bit of warmth in it, right? So this is how you treat your color, right? So <clears throat> we can now talk about any questions that you may have, you know, as regards to formulation and doing color, right? But I want you to understand this is our class for today because you know, it's a lot of information. But we have to start somewhere. And understanding those foundational things is going to be very key for you, right? So we want to now put it all together so that you can do and get fantastic results. But you've got the foundational stuff today. You can walk out of here today if you understand the foundational stuff and get the, a great desired result. Okay, any questions or comments? This is just on the fundamentals, right? This is the fundamentals. Okay. I mean, we, you can ask me other questions and I'll tell you based on what you may or may not know whether we can discuss it yet. Uh-huh, go ahead. Uh, what are boosters? Are boosters used for pre-lightening? A booster is a catalyst, okay. okay? Well, you're dropping a little something in the, in the color or whatever to give you more of a higher shade okay. or something. Now, a modifier 
is also can be considered something that helps you change or tweak your tone. There, a lot of companies have modifiers, okay? Well, um, that's what I was saying. Like when I went into the um, salad, she had me put this, um, I guess, booster or something on before I pre lightened. I guess it was to help with the, the, um, the level of lightness. The, the, that's all that's for, right? So that right. it even works through or something? Well, well what if, the, if that was the reason for the, for the booster as a catalyst, that maybe was to help you with the porosity that's in your hair, okay. right? So porosity can determine how quick or how slow that the color processes. Okay, so, so slows it, down a little bit. it can, okay. and some speed it up, mm -hmm. right? Depending on how acidic or how alkaline that that what they call booster, I call it a catalyst because because it, it, it I, I, I say catalyst because it's a more general general term, and it can mean either or, but it is still a catalyst. Do you recommend to use those before you pre-lighten someone's hair? What I recommend is that you work with your client's hair to balance out her porosity by the healthy maintenance things that you do and you educate your client to do on her hair. So by the time you do the color, then you have, you'll get consistent results. Now, if it's a first time client that's coming in and you don't have that opportunity, then maybe you do have to use something, but that's going to require you in the consultation to determine that by doing maybe a strand test to determine the level of porosity that's in her hair. Um, another question. Yes. On the scalp lighteners, those are lighteners you want to use say if somebody is um, getting on, like from the scalp all over color versus a powder lightener, right? Okay, so let me tell you about lightness, and that's one of our more advanced classes there. We'll, we'll get into that, you know, as we go along. But you have, um, lighteners are much like relaxers. You have your mild, normal, and resistant relaxers. Well, at lighteners, you have your, your um, aggressive and not so aggressive lighteners. Some lighteners will take you from black to blonde that, no in no time, right away. Mm -hmm. Some of them will give you up to seven levels of lift, which is a whole lot healthier. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing anything on your client's hair and she's black, and you go more than seven levels, it's going to be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you know, it just, it just depends. Your level of understanding about, because you have to factor in the health of the client's hair. You got to. Because that's how you make your money. If it ain't no hair there, you can't make no money. <laughs> right? Funny. So I'm saying to you, you have to factor that in. So factoring it in, it also works with lighteners. Some lighteners are more aggressive than the others. On the scalp bleaches, of course, are going to be more general, gent gentler and are used for those instances where you're painting from the scalp out. Right? Um, but then your more aggressive ones, like BW and all of them, they're more aggressive. You put them on them, on them they, they do their thing. But you got to be careful with reapplying because you might have a caustic reaction on her scalp with those like this, right? Yes. Right. You wait, were you finished with your? What, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, can I use your phone? Go ahead. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for example, we were experimenting. Well, Charity was sharing her experience as we were on Google Hangouts, and she was saying that you use a what developer on your hair? Um, probably about the one I have. Was it a thirty or a forty? Okay, so we're going to go with a 20. Uh -huh. And say she wants to apply, she wants to deposit another color on top. Are you going to go with the same developer, or are you going to raise it? Or oh, you great, great, great question. That is a, that's in our advanced class, but I'm going to answer that question for you. But that completes this class for today.